Livestock Class in Grades, Unit 1, narrated by Julie Larson. We will be starting out the class talking quite a bit about evaluating how to evaluate a live animal carcass of uh, alternative livestock. These include, we'll be talking mainly about goats and sheep and poultry. And from there, then in the following weeks, we'll talk more about how those evaluations and grading are used. So what is a grade? Well, it's a standards, essentially, that are based on how the animal looks uh, when it's alive and also what the carcass looks like, the marbling, um, different things that um, people take into consideration when they're deciding on the quality um, of the creature. When determining sheep classes, we look at the age of the lamb. So uh, first off, the youngest, we have lamb 2 to 14 months of age. Uh, this is determined by looking at their front shanks and whether or not they have a break joint. Break joint is where the joints have not fused together, so there is a slight space between them. Uh, when they become a little older, uh, young mutton or yearling mutton, 12 to 25 months of age, the break joint begins to become a what's called a spool joint. And this is when the joint has become to, uh, begun ossifying and becomes one joint. And that's called the spool joint. It does resemble, uh, similar if looking at a, a spool of thread um, from the side angle. Uh, it does resemble that. Uh, and uh, at 12 and 25 months, you might have one spool joint on one leg and an imperfect break on the other shank. Uh, and then when you get to the uh, mutton, which is uh, what's called a sheep is called over 24 months of age. Uh, this is a mature sheep and the meat will tend to be stronger in flavor, uh, maybe a little bit tougher, darker in color. And uh, the flavor uh, used to be that all uh, or most of the uh, what was sold in the grocery stores was mutton. And now things have really changed. The flavor is not nearly as strong as it was in years past. General evaluation of sheep. They take into account uh, several different things. The first thing is the live weight, which is just the animal standing straight out, put it on a scale, and that's the live weight. Dressing percentage is the portion of the live weight that is contained in the carcass. So it's the carcass weight divided by the live weight times 100, which gives you a percentage. The higher the percentage you think of as uh, the, the usable percentage of the animal. So that's without the, um, uh, without the, the skin in the head and uh, different parts. So it's the usable part to make cuts. So you want the highest percentage possible there. Uh, fat thickness, uh, it's measured at the 12th rib. You don't want it very thick. Uh, body wall thickness, this is measured about four and a half inches from the midline of the lamb carcass. And also they look at the loin eye area. And this is, uh, if you're looking at a cross section of the muscle between the 12th and 13th rib. While we use these general eva evaluations for live animals, it seems silly because most of this is all looking at the carcass. But really, the, the, more, the, the, the more you start looking at the live animals, and then you see what uh, the carcasses look like after being processed, it's a learning curve. After a while, you're really going to start to understand your animals, what they look like, what you can expect when they have a certain conformation as a live animal, and what you can expect when the carcass is has been processed. So um, you really are 
thinking ahead towards the final product. When determining the different grades of sheep, you look at uh, quality versus yield. And the first thing is the quality equals the, you estimate the how the, the meat tastes, its palatability, maturity, how old the animal was, and the marbling, which is the fat content that is woven throughout the meat. And you look at this compared to the yield, which is basically you're looking at the fat thickness, which, and then you also estimate the cutability, how much real, when you go to uh, part, make parts out of the entire carcass, when that all gets broken down and cut up, are you getting a good quality, nice, solid, beautiful pieces of meat, not real small and not really huge, uh, that when people go to buy it, they'll be happy with that. So the quality of lamb cuts is broken down into prime being the best, choice, good, and utility being the uh, least desirable of the different cuts. So when they're looking at that, they're looking at carcass maturity. Generally, as the uh, sheep get older, will get tougher, will taste more gamey, or different words used for that, stronger um, taste that not everybody likes. Uh, a firmness in the meat as opposed to being kind of smushy. Uh, texture, what does it look like? The color, is it a nice bright red color or is it more of a brownish dark color? And marbling within the lean. The marbling is actually what gives you quite a bit of, um, well, it gives you a lot of flavor and it also gives you, um, basically it's the fat going through it, which also makes it uh, very um, easy to cut, very tender. And so if there's no marbling, sometimes the cuts can be a little bit on the tough side, but that's not always the case with uh, pasture-raised animals. They can be very lean, and they can also be um, very tender. So the yield grades of sheep are not, remember, are not going to have anything to do with how the meat tastes or looks. It's really going to have to do with, um, believe it or not, just the adjusted fat thickness over the ribeye muscle between the 12th and the 13th rib. So it's going to get a grade 1 if it's 0 to 0.15 inches. And then it goes on down to grade 5, which is almost a half an inch or greater. They really don't want to see a lot of fat on the animal because it just, when they go to cut it up, of course, they're not going to be able to, uh, people don't want that much fat on their meat. So you end up having to toss that out or use it, render it for something else, and it's you don't get a very high price for that. So this is what they've determined as uh, the place that they are going to, uh, gives you a very good estimate of the uh, overall uh, yield grade of that sheep. Goat meat quality grading. At this time, the USDA does not have any official grading system for goats. Uh, so what's happened is there's an unofficial grading system and they use a selection number, so one through three, one being the best, uh, down to the utility, like in uh, sheep, which is the least desirable. Sometimes they use uh, the terminology acceptable or unacceptable. This is going to be changing, I believe, because as the goat meat is getting more and more accepted in many of the mainstream uh, markets. Uh, for the most part, it's uh, more in the ethnic markets, but I think that's going to change as the quality of goat meat here gets better and better, and uh, the, the market, I think, will, will just increase um, all the time. And I think by then, the USDA will be looking at it and that they need to start doing some official grading, and things will get changed.
So when considering the yield grades of goats, of course, this is unofficial, but we look at the best being selection number one, which is the confirmation is superior uh, with regard to the presence of fat cover. And we don't like our animals too fat. Uh, you want them thickly muscled. You want a pronounced outside leg, a full back strip. This guy here is looking pretty darn good. Very good shape and moderately thick outside shoulder. Selection two and selection three, uh, he won't have quite the, the, the shape of this, the confirmation, and then you have the call or utility, which is the least desirable. So dairy goats are in a separate category and their uh, confirmation is uh, and body is, is looked at also, but you also look at the utter confirmation. Is the bag symmetrical? Are the teats uh, the way they should be? Are they properly placed? Are they shaped normally? Um, what kind of milk production has she put out? If uh, she has already kitted and she um, has gone through a, a full cycle, what is she capable of producing? And then one of the main factors they look at uh, in determining and evaluating quality of a dairy goat is the quality of the milk. And that comes down to the butterfat content. The higher the butterfat, the uh, better quality of the milk. The butterfat, of course, is what you get the butter from, the cream. So much more higher priced items than milk. There are six classes for chicken, and when we use this terminology, uh, we are talking about the Cornish cross chicken, or what is the standard for uh, meat birds or broilers in the United States. So first off, you have a very young chicken, which is four to five weeks old. Um, they like to call it a game hen, but really it's just a very young chicken. Uh, it's less than two pounds dressed after it's been um, uh, processed. Uh, the next one is a broiler or fryer. So under 13 weeks of age, and generally the Cornish cross are going to be about six to eight weeks old when they're um, processed. It can be either sex and uh, the meat is very tender at this point. Uh, next, a little bit older, a roaster is three to five months of old. Either sex, tender meated, and then actually you start looking at the breastbone cartilage. Is it flexible or not flexible? Capons are surgically unsexed male chickens. They're under eight months of age, and they still have a, 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 the meat is still very tender. They have a little bit different uh, flavor, more chickeny. Uh, the next is a stewing chicken, a uh, much older chicken, uh, can be more than 10 months of age. They're tending to be less tender than a roaster. Uh, many times, uh, well, you don't really see stewing chickens that often in the grocery store. But uh, at the farmer's markets, laying hens that have outlived their laying life uh, go to the processor and then are labeled uh, stewing hens because they're on this kind of on a scrawny side, but there's still a lot of flavor because they're older. And then you have the cock or the rooster, and that's a mature male chicken, uh, very coarse skin, darkened meat and very hard uh, breastbone tip. Poultry carcass grades uh, are labeled either A, B, or C, and A being the best quality. And what they're looking at here is just strictly what, it, what the carcass appears, how it appears. So you have the conf confirmation, uh, does it just look uh, even, symmetrical, is it flushing, nice uh, plump breast and looks nice and clean, uh, not a lot of fat covering, just a little bit, 
defeathering. Sometimes processors will have a hard time with certain chickens with the feathering. Um, this really comes into play with uh, ducks and waterfowl that there's certain times to process where the where they're in between um, certain feathers that come out. So pin feathers um, and then you know are there cuts in the skin uh, and also discolorations. Is there bruising any kind of thing that would uh, just not uh, you really want to just have a, a nice, clean, uh, light color, just the way it should be. No abnormalities. So if there are any of those things, A would be perfect. B is going down to C where uh, just really not, probably you're just going to go to the soup company. The United States has very strict standards for the grading of shell eggs, you have the best being the double A eggs where they have a very thick white albumin and uh, the egg yolks get up very tight and straight and the, uh, well formed in the center and you have a very small air cell less than an eighth of an inch. They use the, uh, what's called a candling where they put a very bright light be behind the egg so that they can see the airspace. And uh, the eggshell would be clean, uncracked, and a normal shape. The air cell, actually, as the egg gets older, the air sac, the air cell is going to get larger due to the air exchange that takes place uh, um, through the eggshell, which is really very porous. Then you have A and then B's which are used in institutions and bakeries where it's not as important that the uh, shape of the shell is quite perfect. Um, maybe they uh, are not quite as fresh, but still quite very good for consuming. Uh, and they can be used in uh, bakery goods where they, we know that they'll be fully cooked. So eggs also get put into category of sizes and weights. And uh, if you look at the jumbos are the largest, and those for a dozen eggs, that should weigh about 30 ounces. Um, then we go extra large, large, and large are what we tend to think of um, for most baking or for a recipe when those are, are called out. Uh, we think of the large eggs, 24 ounces per dozen. Uh, all the way down to peewees, which are little, only 15 ounces. Um, I don't think I've ever seen those in the store, but um, I'm sure that there's a market somewhere for those.